When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. In the last video, we talked a bit about what happens if we have, for example, butanoic acid, and we add that to ethanol. So we have our ethanoic acid, or sorry, our alkanoic acid, and our alkanol. We put those together, then we add some acid as a catalyst, some, usually some sulfuric acid. Plus we might give it some temperature as well, so we might have our sulfuric acid as a catalyst, plus a decent amount of temperature, so heat. Those two together will make sure the actual reaction will happen, right? So that makes the reaction happen, and it will speed up the reaction. And then we have form our butanate, butanoate, which is our ester, and water as well. Now, one problem we have is because we have high temperatures, we can already imagine that quite a bit of this will be in vapor form, right? So it'll be gaseous. Quite a bit of it will become gaseous. And the one thing when it comes to butanate is the butanoate is even more gaseous than the other two. It has an even lower boiling point, so the ester will most definitely be gaseous. So if let's let's say we have this as our actual reaction. We have let's say we have these green dots in here being our alkanol, so our ethanol, and we have these yellow dots. I'm going to use a different color. You can't see yellow. I'm going to use these purple dots for them to be our butanoic acid. We have heat. In this case, we have heat from our electrical area here electrical heater, and we might have put some sulfuric gas in there to help as a catalyst as well. So what happens then is we form our butanate, butanoate, and I'm going to represent it as this yellow, as yellow, red will be our butanoate. And as soon as they form, what will happen is they will start rising, they will start leaving. Now we want to actually collect our butanoate. It's, we want to have our Easter, we want to be able to look at it, we want to be able to do something with it. And obviously, if it's vapor form, if it's going to be a gas, that's going to make it difficult because it means it's going to fly away. So what do we do? What can we do to make sure that it can't leave the actual area itself? How do we bring it back into its liquid stage? So at the moment it's gas, but we want to bring it back into liquid. So we can look at it and we can smell it. The gas means it just will, get, it will escape. And what we can use generally is we have we want to use something to make it condense again, right? So if we can make it condense, condense means it goes from its gas state to its liquid state. If we can do that, we can actually bring it back and we can then use it for whatever we want to use it for. So in this case, we have it wanting to leave. This is our ester, it's in the vapor form, and then it will hit this. And this we call our reflux condenser. Reflux condenser, or we sometimes refer to it as just refluxing. And the reason why I mention this, stop point itself says explain the need for refluxing during esterification. So this is esterification. We've made our ester here, and what I'm talking about now is again, it's gas. Why would we want to do refluxing? Refluxing just means we're going to bring it back into its liquid form. Well, we want to make do refluxing to make it become liquid again so we can collect it. So it's going to go through this refluxing condenser and there's going to be cold water going through here, cold water, and that cold water will cool the actual gas. And what happens to gas? Well the gas itself won't be able to rise and leave into the atmosphere. What happens instead is the gas will condense and the droplets will drop down and then we can collect it. Now this might not be the exact type of procedure you used. You might have used a bit of a different setup. You can use, you can have, you know, I mean, this is another setup here as well. You can have quite a few setups in terms of your condensation methods. But the idea of reflux is just that we have our very high vapor formed ester, which means it would fly away. But we want to collect it somehow. We want to make sure it doesn't fly away. And, and the way we can do that is by using this reflux condenser. And the reflux condenser is just basically an area where there's lots of cold water flowing through it and the cold water will warm it, uh, will bring the, the gas back to its liquid form and once it's liquid form, which will be here, that's when we can actually collect it and we can do stuff with it. Right? 
So again, the dopamine itself says explain need for refluxing during esterification. The butano 8, in this case our ester, is highly vaporous. We've used lots of heat, we've made it into a vapor. And that's the problem because that means it's going to fly away. We're going to use our condenser to make sure we condense it. We then can then collect it. We can't really collect it that easily in the gas form. We can collect it in liquid form. And that's why we use the refluxing, just so we can collect our actual ester. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.